Hey everyone, Josh and Andy here with Super Clear Epoxy. Today we're running a new experiment using Super Clear Liquid Glass Deep Pour Epoxy, which is designed to be mixed at a two parts resin to one part hardener ratio. But what happens if we intentionally go off ratio? In this video, we're gonna mix four different batches using the wrong ratio, like one to one, two B to one A, 1.5 A to one B, alongside the correct two to one mix. We'll compare the results side by side to see how each one cures, how flexible or brittle they become, and how scratch resistant they really are. We love doing crazy epoxy experiments, so you can see what happens without ruining your own projects. Trust us, the results of this one will definitely surprise you. We built four identical molds using scrap wood and laid them on a piece of plywood covered in tuck tape so we could easily demold everything later. Our first test, a one-to-one -one mix, equal parts resin and hardener. This is wrong for our liquid glass deep pour epoxy, which is designed for a two to one ratio. But here's the thing. I know most people out there think that adding more activator will speed up the cure, but you're about to see how wrong that is. We added green mica powder to make it visually recognizable, mixed it up, poured it into the mold. Next up, we flipped the ratio. Two parts hardener, one part resin, a mix that might seem like it could cure faster or stronger because of the extra curing agent. So we added a blue mica powder, gave it a good mix, and poured it. You might think more hardener equals a stronger finish, but wait until you see what actually happened. We were about to move on to the next pour when we noticed one of the molds was leaking. But don't worry, we fixed it. And here's the secret trick that saved the day. Grab some molding clay and press it firmly along the edges and seams from the outside of the mold. It instantly seals small gaps and cracks, stopping the epoxy from leaking out and saving your project. It's simple, fast, and super effective, especially if you're using a temporary mold like the ones we built for this experiment. Always keep some molding clay nearby because you never know when it's gonna save your pour. Next, we tried something that's actually pretty common, a slight error. 1.5 parts resin to one part hardener. The color looked great, the pour was smooth, but would this slight miscalculation make a big difference? You'll find out soon. Finally, we mixed the correct ratio. Two parts resin to one part hardener, just like it says on the label. We added purple mica powder, poured it like the others, and let all four it to cure. Three days later, we came back to check on the results. We demolded three out of four projects, but left one stuck to the board. Can you guess why? Let's break it down. First up, the green sample, one-to-one -one mix. At first glance, it looked like it had cured fine. It was solid, glossy, and held its shape. But when we did the bin test, we noticed something. It flexed. It wasn't fully hardened. Now this kind of flexibility can actually be intentional in some artistic projects. Some people use a one-to-one -one mix on purpose and they want a flexible finish, like in costume pieces or flexible molds where long-term durability isn't critical. But if you're building anything structural, like a table, countertop, or mold base, this type of soft cure just won't cut it. Next, the blue sample, two parts hardener, one part resin. This one, we didn't even demold it, because we couldn't. It was still completely soft, sticky, and gooey. It didn't cure at all. If you poke it with a stick, it moves like warm caramel and it drags like melted candy. Adding too much hardener might sound like it would make the epoxy cure faster or harder, but clearly it does the opposite. It throws off the chemistry and makes the resin unusable. No matter what kind of project you're working on, this ratio is a total failure. Now let's talk about the red sample. 1.5 parts resin to one part hardener. This one looked great. It cures solid, just like you'd expect. No flexibility, no stickiness, but don't let looks fool you. We'll put it to the test in a second. And finally, the purple sample. Two parts resin to one part hardener. This is our control sample, the one we mixed properly. It cured perfectly, rock solid, no bending, no sticking stickiness, no surprises. Now it's time to really see if there's a difference between the red and the purple. We used a razor blade to do light scratch tests on both pieces. The purple one held up well. You had to apply real pressure to leave marks, but the red one, even the slightest touch from the blade left a clear scratch. So what does that tell us? Even if your project looks cured and feels solid, being even slightly off ratio can still affect the durability and scratch resistance. So here's what we learned. Being slightly off ratio might not ruin your projects by itself, but when you combine that with other factors like temperature, humidity, or embedding objects like wood, it can stack up and lead to serious problems. That's why it's so important to know what your final results need to be. If you're making small crafts or art pieces, the red level result might be good enough. But if you're making a table, bar top, or something that needs to resist wear and tear, a board that scratches with a light touch just won't cut it. So be precise. Know your goal and measure carefully. Thanks for watching and experimenting with us. Let us know in the comments what other weird epoxy tests you want to see next. And if you learn something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stick around for more. We're Josh and Andy with Super Clear Epoxy. Coat better, pour better, be better. 
super clear.